Just when you thought the GOAT was no longer the GOAT, just when you thought the Buccaneers were dead, they're never dead. The Buccaneers can always find a way. This drive was crazy. There was a lot of really intrigue, a lot of very fascinating things that happened in this drive. So I know a lot of people just said, ah, the Rams played soft coverage. And well, that's true. Uh, you know, there's more to it than that. And actually, the Rams were playing soft coverage relatively all game, although it was definitely a little bit stronger in this drive. So I'm going to break down every play in this drive, talk about how they were able to make it happen. A lot of inter little details that Brady was able to pull off here. But the first big play, you needed a chunk play, right? You always need a chunk play on these types of drives. Only 44 seconds left, no timeouts. It felt like the Rams were prote protecting towards the sidelines. And one thing you want to make sure you do at, at this spot is just get inside the 50, get yourself in position where you can throw a Hail Mary, if nothing else. You can at least have a chance. You see what I have on the screen. It's a cover three zone, and Kate Otten's route is a route that can typically work against cover three, where it's going to be kind of get past the linebackers underneath the safety, but given how far off everyone is playing, it's going to be further deep, which typically makes for a tougher throw for the quarterback. Right when this play begins, though, it really looked like, uh, you know, the safety was not paying attention to Kate Otten is my assumption, I, you know, because you see just how open Kate Otten got. Yes, you would have liked to see a Ram pick him up and make that play. That's wide open and an easy throw for Brady. But again, this is what Tampa Bay needed to get this drive going. Look at, as you see, he is able to make that tough catch, he even gets up and picks up a couple more yards. So, hey, every little bit helps in this situation. So, you know, it's almost like the Rams by design allowed that to happen, but it's not a great play, right? Because yes, you do kill some time. You got it to 28 seconds left. That brings up this play where 28 seconds left, uh, second down and 10 because they spiked the ball. So, okay, I'm not breaking down the spikes, but everything else I'm breaking down. They're still going to play this cover three zone, but they're not quite playing as soft this time. And so... What Tampa Bay is doing is they're saying, hey, we got that chunk play. We can afford to work the sidelines a little bit. They didn't have to. They could still go over the middle if they wanted to. But in a situation like this, you have Scotty Miller and Leonard Fournette as the eligible receivers lined up to Brady's left. You see the routes they're running. They're both trying to get into a gap in coverage. Miller's is a little bit further down the field than Fournette. As you see, Brady's going to take the snap. Doesn't love what he sees further deep. So now Leonard Fournette is wide open underneath. Look, Brady's going to make this throw. You're able to pick up around five yards or so. It's not a fantastic play, right? You don't want to pick up. It was actually four yards, you know, a, a yard a second. That's you're just barely not going to quite get there at that ratio. But again, that's kind of a plan B. That was what they did because the deeper shot didn't work. So now it's a third down and six. And listen, I think sometimes in these situations, you think about the clock so much because you do have to play the clock so much. You forget about the fact that you have to also play the downs. You have to play football the way it's designed, right? right? Uh, you only have so many plays. It's third down. If they don't get the first down here, they're down to their final play. And I actually think this is where the speed of Scotty Miller really came into play and kind of won the football game for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Listen, I was just as mad at, as anybody uh, during that dropped pass. I was like, oh my God, we finally get the ball to Scotty Miller and this is what he does. We finally should have had a touchdown and he just drops a pass in the end zone. But he really came through in this final drive. And I think it was the threat of a deep shot. Because, again, what do we know about Scotty Miller? What's his thing? Not a great receiver, but is super fast. And you always have to respect his speed. Just ask Green Bay in the NFC Championship game. That's also what can help set up routes like these. Where you can see that he's kind of, you know... It, uh, the, the, fact, the fact that he's fast is going to keep corners further deep. And so then when he can cut in, it can kind of give him a little bit of a bubble. Watch how Brady takes the snap. You're going to see this bubble open up. And at this point, there is a throw to be made right here. Again, this is just smart football. It's understanding who you should throw the football to. And it's also picking on, uh, you know, a weaker player. You're not throwing to Jalen Ramsey here, who Ramsey was actually, uh, you know, over the middle on this play. You're throwing to a lesser corner. That corner is Darren Kendrick, who there's no getting around it. Kendrick had a, he had a rough day out there. He did. But Brady makes the good throw. They're able to pick up another chunk play. So now we're going over here. Again, still a lot of work to be done, right? You've done a great job, but we know where to do the Buccaneers struggle. They struggle in situations like these, right? In the red zone, where they're finally at now. This is where they've struggled. 19 seconds left. Well, they're going to do something very similar to Scotty Miller once again. I mean, look how it was actually, it was Ramsey on that play who was lined up with Miller, but he was so far deep again, because as great as Ramsey is, he is not as fast as Scotty Miller. And I think that kind of played a role in it. They were playing so far deep that a quick pass to Scotty Miller, they were able to pick up just an, an easy little completion there and get the ball in position to where they could then go for a touchdown. So again, 
A lot of people are going to sit here and say, oh, the Rams played off. Well, the Rams played off for a reason. They didn't want to give up a, you know, one play touchdown. And because of that, Tampa Bay did the best thing they could, which was found the weakness in their defense. They took what the defense gives you. We've heard Tom Brady all the time takes what the defense gives you. Now let's go over here. It's going to be a second down and three. 16 seconds left. Again, they're playing the sidelines so well. And now what is the matchup? They're going away from the top half of the screen where they had been playing for basically the rest, you know, all of this uh, drive had men towards the offense's left. They've been going away from Godwin and Evans, but now they see Godwin has a one-on-one -on -one matchup against Kendrick again, the guy who I said, you know, he had that uh, pass interference call earlier. We'll watch what happens here. Actually, before, just to set it up, you might be wondering, why is this a one-on-one -on -one matchup? There are two safeties deep. Well, because the other safety deep is currently you know, basically in the middle of the field right here. And Chris Godwin is lined up in the slot. So Godwin's going to get the extra attention there. So now when Brady takes a snap, he looks in Mike Evans's direction. He fires and it's incomplete, but there was a flag. And I thought that was a penalty. Again, I'm a biased Buccaneers fan. What do I know? But it looked like a penalty to me. I'll let you be the judge. But uh, yeah, get the penalty there to get the first down and goal at the one. Wasn't a huge play either way, but would have been third down and three at the you know seven yard line. That still is a bit of a jump. Makes things a lot easier. But again, first down and goal at the one we've seen is not a touchdown. So now let's get to this final play, this play action play. And that's what I want to talk about. So I, I kind of alluded to it. I made a very quick reaction video right after this play, uh, right after it happened as, you know, very, uh, let my emotions f fly through my happiness fly through after that. But, uh, you know, on this play, one of the things I brought up was that it was a storyline among Buccaneers media circles that Byron left, which, uh, said that he, he had the quote of, you need you don't, play action doesn't work unless you're running the ball effectively, which, as a lot of people know, is not actually true. Uh, that's something that a lot of uh, people have gone and actually done the research on and found out that it doesn't actually matter if you're running the ball effectively for play action to work. But I just do find it funny how the game winning play is going to be a play action play with 13 seconds left and no timeouts because, of course, they're not running play action here. I, I mean, of course, they're not running the ball here. Of course, they're running play action if they are going to be setting up as they're running the ball. It actually reminds me a little bit of there's a very similar situation in the Super Bowl uh, with around the same amount of time left, no timeouts left. It was at the end of the first half where they did a similar thing, faked as though they were running a play action through to Antonio Brown for a touchdown. Seemed like they're kind of doing a similar thing uh, here of just using the play action. Listen, the opponent might think there's a chance you're running the ball because you, you could. It's something you could do, but you just, you wouldn't. It wouldn't be smart. I circled a player, and honestly, I'm sorry, I didn't even realize, I didn't see the number when I circled him. It is Kendrick, once again, poor Kendrick, uh, being very mean on him, uh, but, you know, watch, just watch what he does. Look, he doesn't play this terribly or anything, but he kind of just goes a little bit too far to the inside, despite being the contain guy, gives up the touchdown to Kate Otten because that play action did just enough, because that fake did just enough, and then Kate Otten Great route. How about Kate Otten coming through with some really clutch plays? Who would have thought? And of course, Tom Brady. I mean, just doing Tom Brady things. This, I thought the season was over. I'm not going to lie. I was saying, you know what? It's been a great run. Now the Buccaneers are leading the division. What a difference 44 seconds can make. I figured I would, uh, at the end of the video, I recorded my live reaction uh, to the, the final touchdown play. So I'll play that and that'll be the end of the video. Okay, going live here to record my live reaction. You see where we're at in the football game. I'm literally shaking. My uh, hand was shaking as I was doing that. I am nervous. First and goal, 13 seconds left. Nine seconds on the play clock. Brady fakes a play action, throws, and it's a touchdown, Tampa Bay. I can't believe that just happened. Oh, my God. I was convinced this season was over. It's never over with number 12 on the field. It's never, never over. Um, Wow.